Hi and welcome to Leitrim Daily. My name is Brett Nearly and you're listening to the Sports Preview Show here on the podcast. Now, I know most of you are tuning in to hear the results of the Sports Person of the Month Awards. We'll have that for you later in the show and you'll find out who our panel for that selection is. I'm sure you'll be impressed by the calibre of people who will be picking that later on in the show and of course your public votes from earlier in the week will be taken into consideration as well but first the main highlight of the weekend is the national football league clash with longford in longford on sunday afternoon at 2 p.m i'm joined by leitrim footballer conor reynolds to talk about his side's chances of securing a first victory in division three this season conor welcome to the show Thanks, Ravi. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Connor, you've been ever present in the team this year. Played three games so far competitively. Well, we'll say three games. The Roscommon yeah. game, we shouldn't probably talk about. The two league games, though, have been pretty impressive performances. What's your thoughts on the season so far? Yeah, I suppose we'll, uh, we'll try and brush the, the FBD league game against Roscommon aside. But, um, um, yeah, I know the first two league games have gone fairly well. Um, I suppose going back to the early game, Probably a bit disappointed we can get the, the two points. Um, you know, played very well. Probably the better team on the night. Um, probably giving them a soft goal and in the last last few minutes that gave them a bit of momentum. Court game probably a bit different. Probably didn't deserve didn't deserve the win, but still a still a few positives to take from that game. You know, looking on in the game, I think most observers would have thought that Cork were just that step above the standard that Derry set. What was it like bit on the pitch and, and comparing the two teams? Ah, yeah, well, look, at the, to be fair, I think, you know, Cork were in the Super 8s last year. Uh, I think most people agree they're probably not a Division 3 side. They're probably, you know, Division 2, maybe even Division 1 team. But, uh, look, we we competed with them for definitely a half hour of the game, probably just their own mistakes in the in the last five minutes of the first half, probably cost us. Um, second half, you know, they probably showed their class, kept the ball in the second half, and... We were probably just probably just chasing them then for the for the second half, you know. Terry has spoken in a number of places and to us as well about the the intensity that's been there since that game against Roscommon. What's the mood been like in the camp this week? Uh, no, the mood's been good because, as I said, there was positive today. I know we, we lost by nine points, but um, I don't know was that was that a fair reflection? Because you know we did have goal chances there in the first half. I know they, they did too, but you know if, if we taken them uh, if we taken them goal chances. We would have given ourselves a real good chance of winning that game. I think in the second half. So uh, no, the mood's been mood's been pretty good, and trend's been very good now since uh, definitely since the Derry game. Yeah, it's your second year in the panel. First year last year, it pretty much went to script in terms of the whole season, um, especially in the league campaign. How has this year, year's league campaign compared to last, from your experience? Um, yeah, last year was yeah obviously went very well. We 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 won every game apart from uh, the, the two games against Derry. Um, you know, we've got a bit of momentum after winning the first few games. Um, this year it's, it's, it's gone pretty well as well, to be honest with you. Um, training's been training's been very good. Um, hopefully now Sunday we can we can get a win under a belt and, and then get a bit of momentum for the last uh, four games as well. I know Terry and some of the lads have been saying that they think they can win every game in the league, but I think most observers looking in again most pundits most fans probably would have written off the first two games we've one point more than most people expected at this point of the season so do we look on that, that as a success or do we look at it on really we should have taken all two points from Derry how does that work in your head? I, I, th- I think uh, for us we're, we're probably a bit disappointed we, d- we didn't get the, we didn't get the win against Derry but look we still have as you said probably a point more than most people would have thought we would have had and um, so yeah, we still need to get that that first win. Like you know, I think that that'll be vital. Longford, of course, winning the O'Byrne Cup. We're kind of disregarding the FBD League. Can we read anything into their F- or O'Byrne Cup success? Well, um, I suppose you can. Um, yeah, they they obviously done well done well to win it. Um, I was up at their game against uh, Loud, the first game against Loud in in, in Pears Park. It was fairly impressive now it seemed like a, a young you know good good attacking attacking team so we we'll probably have our hands hands full but I think if we show up and uh, show up in the day we, we can probably we can probably nick a win like when you go to watch a team like Longford and you know you're going to be playing them in a few weeks what are you looking for are you just there as an observer just to watch the game enjoy the atmosphere or are you looking for specific things uh well you know the fact I, I, I knew we'd be playing them in a few weeks you know, I'm playing cornerback, so I'm prob- probably looking at their probably looking at their corner forwards and seeing uh, seeing what I'll have to deal with on the day. And 
I was fairly fairly impressed now with, with their forward line. You know, we probably, you know, as I said, we'll we'll have our hands full. But uh, yeah, no, hopefully, hopefully we can we can put in a performance. So are you looking at like maybe runs he makes or what foot he kicks with or whether he's capable of kicking with the left foot, that sort of stuff. Is that all kind of in your yeah yeah your that that definitely scouting be report def, definitely in the, in in the back of your head now. Yeah, you be you be keeping an eye on keeping an eye on what what you know their strengths and and you know if they if they have any weaknesses as well. Yeah. Who's been the most impressive player you've played against this season? Because Roscommon, and Cork, Derry are all there thereabouts in terms of maybe the top ten or twelve teams in the country. Um, what has your 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 feel been in terms of the players that you've been up against? Who's who's impressed you the most so far? Um, I suppose I suppose last week Cork have you know Cork would be known for for having very good forwards and I you know I marked uh, um, Michael Hurley in the first half he was a very good player um, and then uh, Luke Connolly came on then as well he was you know I had my hands full with him I marked him for most of the second half and I was very impressed with him like so yeah no no but it's good it's that's that's what you want you want to be marking marking the best players and, and testing yourself against uh, the best players out there yeah. Obviously the sin bin last week gave you an extra player for ten minutes in the game. What's your take on that whole rule? I think it's a good rule, yeah. I Better than it, the black card? Yeah, I, th- I think it is. Like, yeah, it's it's more of a punishment because you know with last year's with the black card, you're just you're just bringing on and bringing on a fresh player. Like so, um, I think teams can really capitalise on on, uh, on the on the sin bin. We we probably didn't uh, last week to be honest. We, we probably should have pushed up a bit more, like when when we did lose a man uh, and and really went for it, and, and we didn't really. But I think Cork really held on to the ball when they didn't, when they were down to the fourteen men. So uh, you know, I, I do think it's a good rule. Yeah. Does it change the mindset of the players on the pitch though when you're a man down and you know you're it's coming back? Is it a case of let's try and kill the clock for the next ten minutes? I I think I think it is, especially the fact that the Cork were up or were up by I don't know seven seven or eight or nine points at that stage. I, I'm pretty sure it was probably in their head. You know, let's keep the ball down until until we get back to to fifteen. Like you know. In terms of the first half, the last five, ten minutes have been a problem in the first two games and we spoke to Terry about it last week on the show and he kind of wasn't really able to put his finger on anything in particular or just turning up, switching off a little bit, lack of experience maybe. What do you put it down to? Yeah, again, it's I don't. It's hard to know. Um, it could be you know, could be some lads you know running out of steam. Maybe you know it was fairly fairly intense uh, intense first half. Well, it was it was just sloppy mistakes. It cost us. Like I think we gifted them uh, one two or one three there uh, before half time. Like we were really in it. You know, we were playing against the breeze. Um, you know, I think if if we went in two points down, we really could have went at them in the second half. But. Yeah, it was, it was just it was just bad passing and, and sloppy passing that, that really cost us that game, I think. This is where most people predicted our league campaign would really start. Playing Longford, we probably wouldn't have expected, to be fair, their success in the FBD, taking a win off a understrength Dublin team, it may be said, but still mm-hmm. a Dublin side, um, which I think their second or third team would give the All-Ireland a decent crack yeah. most years. In terms of, of Longford going forward, are we confident we can win on Sunday? Ah, oh, definitely, definitely confident. Um, I think... Every game that we go into, we're confident we can win. You know, I think Terry's probably instilled that in us. Um, you know, it's not taken away from Longford. I think they're a great side, but I think if we show up on the day, we, we can compete, can compete with uh, most teams. Yeah. On a personal note, you're from Manadoff. You play with the club there. The new centre of excellence. We've talked about it plenty of times on the on the show. What's uh, what impact is that making in your life as a county footballer, especially being from Manadoff? It must be nice to not have to well, travel too far. Yeah, well, I suppose it's it's very handy for me now. It's it's only five minutes up the road, but ah, it's great to have them facilities. Like two great pitches there, like a uh, brilliant gym in there as well. Like so, yeah, no, it's it's brilliant. Yeah. And in terms of the supports that are there for county footballers now, what it, what is the 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 team like behind Terry like is what's there in terms of nutrition support certain condition how much advantage are you to get from all of that sort of stuff ah yeah we've we've a great team there we've a great backroom team there like we've Terry uh, Jason Riley we've uh, Kevin Downs in this year he's a great coach uh, Niall Brady there's doing the nutrition he's a great nutritionist um, yeah Jay was uh, strength and condition so yeah we've uh, we've a, a great backroom team there now and they're uh, yeah good help to us yeah your own plans for the for the year ahead what's what are your goals? Obviously, in club football, and enough, we'll be chasing that intermediate championship. There's a couple of new faces there have come down from senior last year. Makes it that a little bit more competitive. What's the plan on the county front as well as the club front for the year? What would you consider success? Uh, I think on a on the ca- county front, I think definitely just competing in Division Three, definitely staying up. Um, and then if we if we can get a few wins on our belt, you know who knows we we could be up the, the other end of the table. Um, Is club. that realistic? I think so. Yeah, why not? Yeah, you know what I mean. I think if we if we beat Longford on Sunday, it's 
you know, we'll have a bit of momentum going into the uh, last last four games. You know, anything can happen. Um, and club club, I suppose, uh, you know, we'll probably find it tough in in, uh, in Division One now with there's only eight teams. But uh, I think we'll be yeah, we'll be definitely going for a championship this year. Yeah. What's happening? I know we're here to talk about county football, but talk to me about the club for a moment. What's the setup like this year? Who's in charge? And uh, we we still have with Carl. Oh, in Carl, charge. because yeah, he was he wasn't quite sure at the end of the last season what yeah, he was going to stay yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, but no, no, he said, oh no, thank God, yeah, no, Carl's a Carl's a good trainer now. And lads have a lot of time for him. Yeah. And you're hoping to. To go on better and win that. Yeah, no, in, definitely. Yeah. Championship. yeah, I know it will be tough now with a few of the teams coming down, but I know I think we're we're definitely we're definitely good enough, and I think playing in Division One will will definitely help us as well. Like you know, excellent. Well, listen, thank you very much for coming in to me. It's been a pleasure to have you, your company for the last few minutes. The very very best luck to you on Sa- Sunday. I was I nearly said Saturday for some reason. The very best luck on Sunday, and hopefully we can pick up that win that we've just missed out on in Celtic Park. No bother. Thanks very much. Now, it was only last week we were talking about schools' titles heading towards St. Clair's Comprehensive in Manor Hamilton. And it seems it's just like buses. When one comes along, a second follows very quickly after. This time, it is the turn of the girls. And they defeated Jesus and Mary of Gortner Abbey in Cross Malina 7-6 to 3-9 to win the Little Connacht Ladies School Senior Sea Final. And I'm joined by their captain, Emma McLaughlin. Emma, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much, Griffin. Emma, you must be delighted. Yeah, we're extremely happy. We're absolutely delighted to win the title, all right. Talk us through the game, because obviously we've spoken to some of your teammates on the programme before for different reasons. Hannah Johnson, obviously a Connacht and Sligo rugby player. Also, Myrne Devaney, Leah Fox, involved with county football teams and Sligo Rovers. So it's nice to get a chance to chat to you. You are the captain. Talk us through the game in terms of how it went. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough game from the start. It was very it was very close the whole way through. All right, um, they actually started off on top. The um, cross line they had a very good start and they got a couple of points up on us. Um, so we had to defend well against them. But then once we got up and running, we were fine. We um, we were up at half time. Then going in half time, we were up like five points, I think it was. Um, and then they came back in the second half though, and they closed the gap once again. But we just kept plucking away at it and kept getting a few scores up on the board. Seven goals is a pretty impressive tally by any stretch. Um, did you get amongst the scores yourself? Uh, no, I wasn't on the scoreboard, I'm afraid. Not, not in that game. Talk to us about the ladies' football in the school because it seems to be very vibrant in the school and the whole town and club at the moment. Yeah, we have a great ladies' team in the club and in the school, in fact. Um, there's a great vibe around it and um, there's great hype it's pure equal between boys and girls in our school there's um, no big hype about the boys no big hype about the girls um, no yeah we train and we've great trainers who train us in club and in school and we all work as a community and turn together to make ladies football such a success in our area how nice is it to be uh, a young girl playing sport where you're treated and you can you're able to say that that we get treated the exact same way as the boys yeah, there's honestly no better feeling. Like for years, there's been talk about such inequality in in sport between um, males and females. But no, it's great, and um, we get treated great, and we can't actually complain at all about inequality. What's next for yourselves as a team? Do you go on to an All Ireland series? So yeah, we're actually in the All Ireland semi now. We're playing a team from Tipperary, so that ha- that'll be played in the upcoming weeks now. And will you have to travel to Tipperary for the game or a neutral venue? It should be a neutral venue, yeah. We haven't. There's no data or venue confirmed yet, but no, it should be neutral. Talk to us about the people over the team. Who looks after the team, the coaches and mentors? Um, so, Anthony MacDonald and James Glancy, they both play for senior manor team and James has played for county as well. Yeah, we've both, we're Daniel. familiar with both of them in these parts of the yeah. world, all right. Um, yeah. And, and uh, others? And Danielle Nolan as well. She helps us as well. So... It's just them three, really. But we have a big support with the school and our principal and all are so supportive of our team. I'm just looking down through the, the squad photograph here that's in the Leitrim Observer this week and there seems to be a big bunch of girls. Where do you draw most of your players from? Are they all Glencar Manor or are you pulling girls from, from other places around North Leitrim? Uh, so, yeah, there's Glencar Manor and then there's Drum Hair and then we have some then from Black Lion as well. So you've so. got imposters, Cavan imposters coming across the border to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. 
Well, listen, Emma, thank you so much for joining me. That's probably all we have time for, unfortunately. But the very best of luck to you in the month in the against the Munster champions in the All Ireland semi final. You must be raring to get at them at this stage. Exactly. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for talking to me. Now, of course, all month we have been talking about different performances from individual athletes, teams, clubs, schools, you name it. We've been keeping track of it here on Leitrim Daily, and I've gathered a motley crew of of sports people, media outlets to ha- media outlets. That's very unfair, Darren. I apologise. Media personnel who follow sport in the county to have a chat with us about how this is all going to work. Now we have five chairs at the table. I'm going to be here. I get a vote. Emlyn Mulligan joins me, Leitrim footballer, uh, Melvin Gales footballer, former Sligo Rovers footballer. That's, that's correct, Brett. Yeah, so g- great to be here. You're here for your multi-sport input, but m- mostly known, obviously, for your uh, exploits in GA world here in the county. I'm also joined by Donegal Holmes, uh, international triathlete, winner of an Ironman uh, in his age group. Huge achievement. Thousands of athletes take part in those. And uh, you came home in a pretty tight battle. Well done. Yeah, nearly. Nearly came fourth overall. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. I was past about 100 metres to go. But it would have been nice. I got fifth overall, first in my age group, and uh, qualified for the World Championships in Hawaii. I'm not sure if people appreciate how big of an achievement that is, but that's absolutely massive. These yes. are worldwide events. Athletes from every country on the planet in, in them, and a huge commitment. Thank, uh, thanks for coming along and, and helping us decipher and give us maybe a, a non-traditional sporting outlook on some of these participants in, in the events tonight and to Darren Mulvey of Shannon Side FM people will know your dulcet tones from, from the radio from listening to you screaming <laughs> you get very excited Darren I do yeah but you're looking at it, you get, you, it, it sometimes it can, be, it can be hard to be carried away I suppose given the year I, the year I started too it was the, the crest the was wave it was kind of hard not to get caught up on a lot of it but um, I look at you just you, you try to you try to give people a sense of what's going on out there like you know and, Hanging around with Willie Hegarty. That's it, hanging around with Willie too much. Yeah. We Willie, know who you're Willie, Willie rubs there. off on you, like, you know. Yeah, hanging around with Willie too much. But then, well, listen, I know, it's great. Well, listen, lads, we want to keep it nice and tight, so we've a load of things to get through. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so in terms of the international category, two nominations in this section. Uh, we have boxing and volleyball, neither uh, huge sports in the county, but it's great to see them competing at an international level. Sean McDermott's boxing club, Dean Clancy, made his international debut, his senior international debut, I should say, at the Strangia International Boxing Tournament in Sofia in Bulgaria, losing to the eventual champion in their last eight, last 16 featherweight bout. And secondly, after their national schools title earlier in the month, Drumshambo Vocational School's cadet boys volleyball side represented Ireland against the Northern Ireland champions, and their victory put them joint top of the honour roll with four victories in that competition. Some fantastic achievements there, boys. What do you think? The two nominations here, um, Dean Clancy, you know, it's well known his achievements in the past and getting to the level he's got is remarkable. And obviously with the Drumshambo Vocational School, their, their volleyball team again, are, again, another massive team achievement, I suppose. But for me, for Dean going forward, I think he's going to achieve bigger and better things going forward. And the fact that it's a monthly award, I think for Drumshambo Vocational School as a volleyball team, it, it might be an opportunity, it might come around again. So for me, I'm going to give them my number one vote. Pretty impressive stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, Dean, um, you know, international debut, it's a pretty big thing for him. It, and uh, here in Emlyn, knows him a bit more than I would. He he, uh, he sees great things for his future, so it sounds very promising for him. Um, from Shambo Vocation School, I said it earlier, I, I've seen these guys pop up a lot. Like, their volleyball team has just been, you know, they've been, whatever they're doing down there, it's, it's a great formula. And, um yeah, I think that's it's kind of a funny one though. Volleyball, like yeah. it's not a sport you would have expected to be around, but it's been thriving in the school for forty years. Yeah, which well, is because my mother obviously was being a PE teacher. And, of course, was my PE teacher in the vocation school so it's in, in, in Drumshambo. <laughs> she used to, was the, the and volleyball was 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 very much on one of the, you know, and uh, her one of her favorite ones. So um, yeah, I always remember volleyball being the thing, you know, back. When I was in school, not that I'm that old, but, um, but yeah, so it's great to see them go from strength to strength, and uh, yeah, good power to them. Darren? Yeah, I, I'd echo everything that, that Donald has said and everything that uh, Edmund has said as well. I know um, Dean Clancy, it's just, there's something about, you know, maybe small little areas or enclaves of counties that produce so many uh, people. Like, I, I think Dervla Rooney fights out of uh, Sean McDonald's yeah, as well. Yeah, she does, well, yeah. Like, and, you know, to Both have, at the junior to, or the to have two Olympics. internationals in the one club in, in a kind of a lowest populated county in, in the yeah. country is, is a fantastic achievement. So fair play to Dean for that. 
Um, also with the, with the volleyball lads, okay, I, I I've seen you know, in me my other um, my other my other uh, day, my other uh, day job as a as a teacher. Um, you know, you see with the like some lads that can come into schools maybe and they, they pick up a new sport and they absolutely run with it and they thrive with it. And and like schools are a great spot to give um, you know minority sports maybe a good lash. So like um, fair play to the volleyball lads. And as as Donnick already said, there's, there's such a tradition there, and I, it's it's brilliant to think that like they can be you know contesting and winning international titles as well. Like you know, so brilliant stuff. Well, let's get down to the brass tacks. We know Emlyn's uh, verdict. What are we saying? Uh, well, I'm going to go with from Shambo. I think it's uh, I think it's great. You know, like they they, um, they keep appearing, like you know, and this seems to be going from strength to strength. And I think it's great. Like you know, there's there's so many sports out there now for them to be, you know, progressing in this one to the level that they're at. I think it's, I think it's great. Yeah, I'm just going to go for them now. Having said that, I I hear Dean is going to he's he has a good future ahead of him too. So. But this time I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with Drumsham. Okay, so that's two votes for Drumsham. I'm gonna jump in here now and say that I think Dean has been phenomenal. He's won the public vote, so he's got two one, shall we say, as the score. I'm gonna push the book over here to Darren because I have <laughs> uh, no problem. My pleasure because I think I've seen both. I know some of the lads involved in Drumshambo. I know, I've met Dean a couple of times, I've interviewed him, I've seen the commitment that he puts in, I know what it takes to get to that level, Senior International, you know all about it, yeah. Donica. Um, and I just think in terms of the commitment that's required, I'd like to mark his uh, international debut with, with the vote for what it's worth. Um, I think uh, it's got to be a phenomenal achievement and I suppose that means that it's deadlocked going to you. Now, if you choose to pass, it goes to the public vote, so just let you aware of that, but it's two all. Darren, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to stick to my guns. Um, I got first of all. I got to say um, to 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 Dean and Ferris, um, as Dominic has said too, he's probably a guy that's going to have so much um, opportunities, you know, ahead of him going down the road. And might even end up in a green singlet yet. So that'd be that'd be great for him. But uh, I just think you know an international title, um, minority sport, you know, small school, you know, that the Shambo lads have have a have really pulled out the hat there. So fair play to them. I'm going to give them my vote. Spot the teacher giving the vote to the Dutch <laughs> well, that good. Um, so that does mean that we have a winner of our first ever international sports per- person. Sports person is a team. How do we do that? But no, we know what we mean. It, it's the uh, the team of the of the category, and that is Drumshambo Vocational Bo- Boys Cadets Volleyball Team, national and I suppose international champions both this month. They even actually got a mention. I don't know if anyone saw it in the Johnny Sexton's. Um, was covered in the Irish Independent about his press release or his press conference before the the game last weekend, and they were talking about how uh, Andy Farrell and Johnny Sexton were were talking to the media in Abbottstown where the game was taking place, and they just said that the noise coming in from a very small group of people at an international volleyball event was totally affected the whole press conference like so that's how much of an impact they had on Irish sport last week so oh, um, so <laughs> as, yeah <laughs> I thought it was hilarious because I was looking at it going I was reading it in the paper going I know exactly who did that that's Drew Shabla right. um, so yeah no by all accounts a fantastic all Ireland or all Ireland final against the, the Northern Champions. So congratulations to Drumshambo Vocational School. Had the pleasure to sit down with them a couple of weeks ago. Great lads, and the very best luck to them in their future careers. We might be talking about one of them later on in the program as well, because I know Connor Flood is a member of that team, and he's nominated in the local category. We'll get to that very shortly. Now, in the national category, we have a mass of 14 different nominations. This is, for such a small county that gets derided all the time, it's phenomenal to see such activity across such a wide range of sports. Let's start at the top, work down through the list. Um, what we might do is we might just go right down through the list and then we'll hear what each of you have to say. So, uh, Lethal Marksman Keith Byrne gets a nomination after his flawless nine-point performance in Leitrim's Alliance National Football League opener away to Derry in Celtic Park where Leitrim recorded an impressive draw on their return to Division 3. 2016 Olympian Breach Connolly from Kinlaw won the prestigious Fields of Athen Rye 10k road race, smashing the course record with a fantastic time of 34-41. Double jobbing as the manager of the Leitrim pool team at the Northern Ireland 7-man team championships, Carrick and Shannon's Colin Crossan was also one of the top performers for the team as Leitrim's side eventually lost 11-4 to three-time All-Ireland champions Antrim in the final. There was celebrating in Drumshambo, as you've already heard. There's going to be more after today's show in Drumshambo Vocational School while they secured this All-Ireland A Cadet volleyball title 
against Roscommon opponents, Elfin in NUI Galway. It's always a nice little added bonus there to beat the Roscommon team. Uh, Leitrim Village's Matthew Early, who is my nephew. I might as well declare the conflict of interest here. Uh, he was part of the Sligo Rugby Club side who secured the Connacht Senior Cup with a 19-12 victory over Corinthians of Galway in the sports grounds. They added the Connacht Senior Cup title to their league victory to win their first ever double for the club. Despite the defeat against Vermana, Martin Feeney starred for the Leitrim Hurlers in a solid second-half performance as Leitrim chased a half-time deficit in their Alliance Hurling League opener. Killian Gaffey is nominated. He's Leitrim's under-20s last line of defence. He's from Carrick and Shannon. He was inspired uh, as he made his under-20 and senior inter-county debut in January. Uh, the Carrick and Shannon so- shot stopper has also been targeted by Sligo Rovers under-19s this season and I believe has subsequently signed for the bit of red. Another guy who's off to... The showgrounds for his football this year is Manor Rangers. Jack Kelly was the captain as Sligo Leitrim under 13 secured the Subway Interleague Ulster final and advanced to the All Ireland semi finals. They played the DDSL, I think it's this weekend. Jack was recently announced as a member of the Sligo Rovers under 13 squad for 2020. We'll be talking about his teammate. Uh, Peter Moran in just a few moments Trident Swim Club had a fantastic month with seven swimmers qualifying for the National Division 2 Championships but Conor Lanigan gets his nomination for the qualifying time for the Irish Summer National Championships in Division 1 in the 100 metre butterfly a very new look Leitrim ladies started their Division 4 campaign with a straightforward victory over Derry and Carla Le Guen's work rate and intensity stood out from a number of excellent performances from the 25 players who featured for Leitrim Alana McGuinness of Carrick Athletic Club continued her development as a top-class athlete with a number of fantastic women's 60-metre performances in the AAI National Indoor League this month, including a bronze medal in the National Junior Indoor Championships. While her compatriot North Leitrim's AC North Leitrim Athletic Club's Dara Mitchell took home a silver medal in the 3K walk at the same championships to add to his ever-growing collection of walk medals, having moved up from under-18 grades last year. The other Leitrim representative in that victorious Sligo Leitrim under 13 squad, Peter Moran, was amongst the goals in the 3-2 Ulster final victory over Cavan Monaghan. Now, the final ca- candidate or the final nominee, we definitely could we could have picked any of the team uh, from that impressive draw with Derry in this category, but Shane Quinn gets the nod for his end-to-end energy and massive contribution with a very late block to deny a Derry winner putting his name as the last person on our list. 14, wow. That is a phenomenal, phenomenal list of achievements. Yeah, for such a, such a small county and, you know, population, it's incredible. Like, you know, some of these achievements, you know, are just remarkable and, and credit to all the work they're putting in. Um, very hard to pick a winner and winners from this. Like, so it's, uh, Let's talk about the, the online vote first, because obviously we've asked people to pick the online vote. Now, we did mention the online vote. It was, in the international category, it was 123 to 102, so quite tight. From Shambo edged out in that case, but they've come through and they've won it. So it's not all about the online vote, but as we have said, the online uh, is a fifth seat at this table in terms of the results. So the results so far, uh, Keith Byrne with 31 votes, Breach Connolly with 9, Colin Crossan with 12 Shambo Volleyball had 37 in this category. Matthew Early, 109, 109 votes. Martin Feeney with 9 votes. Killian Gaffey, 116 votes. Jack Kelly, 64. Connor Lanigan, 1 vote. Carla Le Guen, 124. Alana McGuinness, 14. Dara Mitchell, 21. Peter Moran, 59. And Shane Quinn, 4. Which means that in terms of the public vote, uh, and we'll explain how we're going to do this as well. So it won't just be a kind of discussion. We want the public vote to actually have an impact. So the top person will get five points. Second will get four. Sec- third is three points. Fourth is two points. And the fifth person on the list will get a single solitary point. And then each of us will allocate those values as well. And whoever has the most points at the end wins the contest and wins the, the title. Now, we have from the, the win, and it's quite obvious that some of the sports have been better at others uh, in terms of uh, getting the vote out. So people have been taking advice from some of the political candidates that have been going around from door to door for the last few weeks. Ladies football tops the bill with Carla Le Guen. She gets five points for her top of the poll uh, performance in the online vote. Killian Gaffey comes in second place. He picks up four points, while Matthew Early has three points to his name after the public vote. Jack Kelly and Peter Morn, very little between them. Jack Kelly just edged out his teammate uh, with 64 votes. 
versus 59 votes. So it's um, very tight between them. But Jack gets two points for his efforts. Peter for one. Ironically, if we'd put them together as a team, they would have come second. But that's that's unfortunately not the situation they're in at the moment. Uh, sorry to bring that up. but uh, So that's where we are. So we have Carla Le Guin, Killian Gaffey, Matthew Early, Jack Kelly and Peter Morn. As you said, there's so much talent ranging from different sports. Um, it's great, I suppose, for a county for a legion, though we have so many people that were able to put up for a nomination. But unfortunately, we can only pick a handful of them here. Um, but... Do you want me to start off with my number, my top one? So just to talk us through. Well, talk us through who you think is, has impressed you, and then maybe finish off with your. Yeah, well, there's a range of people sticking out there. Obviously, I know you 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 phoned in on your own nephew, um, Matthew Early. You know he's playing at a high level rugby there in Sligo and winning the Connacht, the Connacht Cup down there was a massive achievement for himself, and he's still only a young fella. Um, you know, for him to be playing at that level against us was a lot of men older than his age is a massive achievement, and again winning it. Go to soccer, young Jack Kelly, captain of the Sligo Leitrim team, you know, going into an Ireland semi final, I think it is against EDSL, another great achievement for a young fella. Into athletics, you have Alana McGuinness there, um, you know, Breach Connolly there, another one, like, you know, again, they're flying the flag well for Leitrim in athletics. And then in, obviously in the GA itself, you know, Leitrim were unfortunate, maybe not to take all two points up in Derry, but again, Keith Byrne and Shane Quinn were, were pivotal in that. But for me, for me, number one, I suppose, being GA background in that, and I suppose having played for Leitrim for so long and kicking freeze, I do understand the pressure of kicking free kicks for Leitrim. And I know a lot of people might have said keeper and kick nine points, but most were freeze, but they still have to be kicked over the bar. And in a tense situation against a, you know, a top team that I suppose people would say shouldn't be in the division they're in, but I'm going to give my five points or my number five or however way you want to put it, my top four to keep burn. Excellent. Um, to start the ball rolling. St- stick, sticking with the Gaelic boys, I like it. <laughs> uh, my second, uh, no, so my fo- number four is going to your nephew. Uh, I- I'll keep honing in that. There was no, there was no, there was no notes I, passed I over not, here. Any money handed over. But I'm going to give Matt early. I know Matt. I've met Matt a few times. I actually he, he done a bit of work experience in Egypt Men's when I was That's down there. So I got, true, yeah, I actually yeah. got to know him. Yeah. But again, listen, he's a great attitude and he's a young fella and. Again, he's playing at the top level at his, at his age and his achievements um, have been great t- to date. So I think he definitely deserves that for what he's put into the, that he's put into the rugby there in Sligo. Um, I was kind of, you know, there's a lot of picking and choosing here. So I'm going to give Jack Kelly um, my number three. Jack obviously is only 13 years of age, but I suppose having captain Sligo Leitrim, having played Sligo Leitrim myself, I know the level it takes to get to that. And it's a massive commitment even at that age and for parents and alone to be bringing them over and back to road to Sligo. But... You know, to be called into Sligo Rovers now as well at that age, I think it's been a great month for Jack. Um, so I'm giving him my number three in that category. Followed by number two, I'm going to give uh, Alana McGuinness. Um, obviously, again, it was the the 60 meter hurdles. Um, she's, you know, she's she's competing at national level again. Only no, she wasn't hurdles. She was the, just the 60 meters. Oh, 60 meters. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but she she got a personal best of that in her times and that. So again, listen. To bring, I suppose, to change away from the football and things, a lot of our athletics, I suppose, is forgotten about at times, maybe. I know my side of things, anyway, so I think it's only right that the likes of herself um, is given, I suppose, given a bit of thanks and, 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 and I suppose, a bit of support that is probably needed throughout the county a bit more on it, but I have to say fair play to her, so I'm giving her my number two. And finally, to keep it close to home, I think, I know Breach Connolly won the 10K in Attenray in record time, and... I suppose it's not a massive achievement in terms of what she's achieved already in her sporting career, you know, being an Olympian herself, or you know, which is massive. But I think even them small little things still they shouldn't go unnoticed, even though she is at the level she, I suppose, she is competing at. And giving her my number one, then as in the one point vote. Okay, so Emlyn's votes on the table, uh, gentlemen. What are we thinking? What are, do we want to talk through the board? Who's impressed you this year? Um, Start with you, Darren, maybe. Yeah, well, I, I suppose, as, as Dominic has said, it, it's, you, know, it, you kind of feel like you, you kind of feel like you're cheating, you know, nine, nine in the mouth, but we do want to talk about pick, you're only picking five, because like, they're all you know, very much worthy in, in their own respects. Um, I suppose going through the board, we've already talked about uh, the Dumshambo lads and what a great achievement that was. Um, you know, as well, the, the, some of the young, young, younger, younger competitors there too, in the, in the Peter and Jack as well, you know, doing, doing really well at such a young age. Making an impact too. Um, I suppose when I go through one to five, for three hours. Yeah, if you want, if you want to start maybe with your with your one vote, fifth place on your list. Yeah, no worries. Well, I, I give uh, I give fifth place to to Mark Feeney and the Leitrim Hurlers. Uh, so the Leitrim Hurlers as well. So I'm led to believe uh, Mark had a really good game against Fermanagh. Now I've I've probably I've heard Uncle Con- Conway come out and said you know that the the hurlers that they probably were a little bit you know only get getting the goal in that game. That they've got a three week layoff and they're hoping to be make more inroads in the in the league before the Nicky Rahard 
Cup, but I was following the game on Twitter, um, and I was to speak to Martin, and really, really, really impact from the lads there from half-back, so um, I'd be giving my one point to Martin, to the Legion Hurlers. Uh, moving on to the, two, the second, uh, I'm going to give my two to, to Matthew Early. Um, like I think, as you said there, a massive achievement for like Sligo to be, uh, to be uh, you know, competing with kind of maybe the, the, the traditional powerhouse of kind of club rugby in, in Galway Corinthians and for such a young fella to be holding his own on the team like that. Um, I led to believe he's a he's a, he's played for Connacht before he's represented Connacht under eighteen. Yeah, he so won the interprovincials two years ago with Connacht under eighteen. So played nineteen. He's, a, as he's well. a guy that's uh, really really you know putting a marker down, making a statement for himself. Um, so I, I would give him me two. Um, my three, I'm going to give to the Shambo lads again purely because um, I know they've already come away with some laurels already this, uh, today. But um, again, fantastic achievement for for from a minority sport from a school team. So more power to the lads there. I'm going to give them me number three. Uh, my number four, I'm going to give uh, Keith Byrne. I, just, I, I was obviously there that night, uh, you know, live commentary on the match, and he was unerring. He was an absolute metronome, and it was a, you know, it, you really got the got the impression every time he saw over the ball that it was a guaranteed score for us, and that's a massive, uh, a massive luxury for any team to have, uh, any manager to have. So he really stood up to the plate that night. Um, fair play to him for that. So I think he did, definitely deserves the four and five. I'm going to give my five to Alan McGuinness, who is uh, by all accounts a fantastic young a- young athlete. Um, and really will be. I, I, I've no doubt that she could really push on and maybe see her in, in a green single in, in years to come. But she's a uh, she's been bubbling under there. She's kind of uh, extremely competitive nearly in every event she goes in. And you know, getting a sixty meters indoor there early on, early on there is a uh, is a fantastic achievement. So I'm going to give her my number five. Yeah, her times have been exceptionally impressive, and a silver medal in the indoor is always nice to come home with. Um, so congratulations to Alana on that. Now, can I go my nominations first before you jump in, Donica, if that's all right? Yeah. Well, I obviously have been keeping an eye on all of these people. I was aware most of them come in, or we've spoken to a lot of them on the programme. And so <clears throat> for me, looking down through the list, I'm going to start at the bottom and work up again, same as yourself, uh, Darren. Uh, for me, fifth place, Killian Gaffey has had a phenomenal month. Um, he came in, he turned eligible on the 1st of January. He wasn't actually allowed to play senior adult football until the 1st of January this year. A week later, not even a week later, three or four days later, he's lining out for the under-20s, two years out of his age grade. I was shocked to hear, actually, I, I was yeah, I seen him come on, I was at the game, obviously, uh, the, doing the Roscommon FBD game, seen him come on, uh, just thought he was under-20 keeper, you know, you, you, you actually presume they're 19 or that, um, he's only in fifth year. He's only in fifth year, he's he not doing the leave insert for another 18 months. 2021, 20, wow. it's a... Like, it's phenomenal. Wow. He's been playing with Longford Town, and he's just signed for Sligo Rovers, that might curtail his involvement with the first team, in, in terms of the Leitrim football going forward, but... He played, by all accounts, I wasn't at the game, but by all accounts, everyone was raving about how good he was in the, the first under-20 game of the season. We got hammered, but at the same time, he, by, by all accounts, impressed everybody who was there, and only for him it would have been even worse. And um, it was nice to see him get his chance then when Jeremy McKiernan got injured the following week for the seniors, and he ended up playing in goals for probably a good 20 minutes in, in that game against Roscommon in a tough game, already conceded five or six goals at that stage. So we were had a couple of goals on the scoreboard at that point, and it was um, he did well, he did well. Like There was very little he could do. It was literally again, sticking your finger in the dike. You'd, he'd back all chances of making much of an impact. But um, one kick out of sight, he had a very solid first game for a 17-year-old huge Very thing to ask a 17 year old come into that, yeah. that environment and, and you know and uh, uh, and contribute positively but I thought, I thought he more, more than held his own given the situation that's right at that stage like you know so yeah no credit to him yeah absolutely so he gets my one point uh, my two point goes uh, stays in the house it goes to Matthew Early I better I get shot I won't be allowed in if I don't <laughs> give him a vote uh, I do I, I'm probably being unfair on him here I'm probably being a little bit hypercritical on him because he's our family and because I'm related to him and I don't want to be accused of nepotism but um it is just one of those things where I think uh, he he has achieved what if it was a Gaelic person we were talking about here has achieved a, a Connacht Senior League and Cup Championship in the space of a single season and no more than Killian Gaffey he's just 18 he hasn't turned 19 yet um, first year in college it's a huge achievement and I'm a bit close to it so I, I, I kind of maybe underplay it at times but it is actually a, a huge achievement so he gets my two I probably should give him more but I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm being un, unfairly critical on the lad uh, but he's a great lad and he's a huge future ahead of him if he wants it uh, Alana McGuinness gets my number three I think she's a f- really really bright talent she won the Leitrim Sports Awards uh, Young Athlete of the Year last year deservedly so she's only getting warmed up this year and I think um, she's going to have a really, really good year if she keeps on form that she has at the moment. She gets my number three. Uh, Drumshambo Volleyball, they get my number four. 
Um, I suppose I had this kind of picked in my head before we came in. I didn't know they would win. I actually expected Dean to win uh, the, the international. I thought fo- the volleyball team deserve everything they're getting. To have that commitment as a team to a minority sport that maybe isn't seen as the coolest thing on the planet. Um, I think it's fantastic. And I love seeing these minority sports, like you mentioned earlier, but pockets popping up. So fantastic to see that. They get my four points. Of, yeah, four points. And then Dara Mitchell, uh, the 3K walk he gets my five. I think he uh, winning a, a national medal at that level um, is a huge achievement, and he gets my five. I think it's a, a decent time, and I think he deserves it. So he gets my five points. So no pressure, Donakith. Oh, my God, right. <laughs> okay, well, um, you know, first of all, I mean, all these guys and girls are just incredible athletes. I mean, they seem to be going from strength to strength. These names keep popping up, you know, on... on on pages I follow and stuff so it's, it's just great to see we like there's such great youth in it as well like you know we were saying a lot of these guys are you know in their teenage years like they have such a you know some great years ahead of them so um, you know this is this is kind of hard but I mean close to home for me just because I am involved as I'm one of the coaches for Carrick Athletic Club I see firsthand Alana McGuinness for me um, you know Alana has just come from you know, strength to strength. I mean, over the last number of years since I started coaching. No, you're going from the top down. So you've started. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's fine. That's, Is that no, okay? that's fine as long as we know. <laughs> uh, in case <laughs> I mark down one against get to name when you yeah, mean yeah, five. Yeah. yeah. Alana's going to get my five. I mean, she, she works incredibly, incredibly hard. You know, John does such a great job there coaching them and Mary and all the coaches in there. So um, for me, I think, you know, she's come from strength to strength. She's, she's kind of matured as well as an athlete. And I just think, you know, kind of watch this space I really think that Alan is going to you know do big things for us and um, yeah I wish her the best so she gets my five um, number four I'm going to have to you know side with you maybe um, uh, don't side with me no, make your own decision <laughs> make your own decision I'm going to lift your two I'm going to make it four I, 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 for matching <laughs> um, no again you know I, I've kind of I've, I've recognised Matthew you know in the last a uh, couple of years and, and uh, his sport and exploits as well so I mean yeah can't go and notice I mean the guy is obviously tearing it up and uh, more power to him yeah I just I'm delighted for him I think you know he's a, he's a good future ahead of him it looks, it looks very promising for him and I wish him the best yeah so four for him um, number three I, I just want to recognise the lads from the Leitrim Pool team because I think you know um, they had some great success over the last couple of years and um, I know Colin Cross and the lads involved in that so I, I'm going to give them I'm going to give Colin a three because they're always there or thereabouts in these in these competitions they definitely represent us very well that, that Leitrim Pool team has gone on a good few years they've stuck together and um, yeah I think the lads deserve a little bit of a shout out so um, yeah I'm going to give Colin um, and the Leitrim Pool team there my three points um, uh, who else did I? Oh. Oh, Peter, yeah, I went moved on to Peter Moran. Um, yeah, I mean that you know being involved with the the, um, uh, the Carrick Town uh, Football Club, just been one of the coaches there. That's a it's a tough squad. There's a there's a there's a huge volume of children and kids coming up there in those younger age groups. Like you know we're like we're maxed out in a lot of those younger groups so I mean to, to stand out in that um, division and even in the 13th I think like, you know fair play to him I, I'm going to give him a shout out for that and um, um, yeah I think two points for Peter two points for Peter and, my and number finally one, your number your, I can't pass well, not your number one your, your one point your one fifth point, place yeah. <laughs> just, just in case people are listening and losing a bit of track yeah <laughs> It's much easier if you can see the board like we have it here. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to write it down. Um, just I go to I go to uh, I go to give Bridge uh, my, my my final point because uh, I just think that's that's incredible. That's a tough race over there, and you know what? That draws a, a good caliber of athletes over there, and I think that time is is that's pretty incredible. Like so, um, um, you know, Bridge has accomplished so much as well. But uh, yeah, I think. That's uh, that's definitely worth recognition, Alina. Anyway, so she can have a point for me. So Excellent. So let's just do a quick tally on the scores. Working from the bottom up, uh, we have Martin Feeney on one point, Breach Connolly on two points, Colin Crossan and Peter uh, Moran mm-hmm. on three points. On five points, we have Killian Gaffey, Jack Kelly, Carla Le Guin, and Dara Mitchell. Uh, seven points, we see the Drumshambo volleyball team. Uh, nine points, we have Keith Byrne. And then we have a tie for the lead. We have two other names uh, tied on 15 points. So that is Matthew Early 
and Alana McGuinness. And like we said at the start, it's decided by the public vote. They get the casting votes. So in this instance, um, I, I know Matthew got a Matthew finished third in the public vote and, and Alana didn't. I get the results here in front of me, but I think it was uh, 100 and something versus about 20. Again, that's probably down to the, the machine. Uh, Alana McGuinness got 14 votes in the public vote, while Matthew Early got 109. Again, probably not 100% the fairest way to pick that, but uh, the Sligo Rugby Club, to be fair, uh, they got the machine out the other day and uh, they got the votes. <laughs> because if he was relying on the family, like I'm not going to lie, he would have been struggling. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's not, that's not, and that's not done running the family, but just the facts are the votes came from, from Sligo mostly. Um, so that is it. That is the winner, Matthew Early. I'm going to be absolutely know. lynched by the audience, uh, yeah, but, I, <laughs> but I'll, get, I'll be able to go home. I'll be able to show my house <laughs> for Sunday house. roast on Sunday. Yeah. Um, so congratulations, Matthew Early. I know he has been putting in a lot, a lot of time. And he's been nominated in a very various these awards. He's never quite managed to, to win it. So thankfully, his uncle set up a, an award he can get. No, I'm sorry, Matthew. <laughs> I'm apologising. Um, but uh, that's congratulations to Matthew on that. Richly, richly deserved. On to the final category here. We have um, some other phenomenal achievements. This time on a local level, and we have nine ca- candidates. I keep saying candidates. I got to get that election uh, mode out of my head. Uh, we have nine nominees in the the local section and this is to acknowledge people who are just doing it week in week out for their club their school their team whatever it might be on a on a local level and uh, we have nine nominations uh, Carrick Town Shane Byrne he helped Carrick Town return to winning ways with a 4-3 away victory over Kulani United in the Sligo Leitrim Premier League in rugby uh, Carrick and Shannon completed a late comeback to share the spoils 2020 with Corinthians in Connacht Junior 1C at the start of the month, a late try from their captain Keith Crossan to level the game sees him take the nomination in that category. Top scorer for Manor Rangers in what was a fantastic month for the Sligo Leitrim Super League side, striker Robbie Cunningham added to his growing reputation by playing a key role in a great 2 0 away victory over Carberry in the Sligo Leitrim League. A penalty kick progression over Galway side Renmore and a continued Super League challenge, which actually culminated last weekend after I wrote this with another victory against title challengers Cartron. Uh, fantastic week month for Manor Rangers. A Drumshamba youngster Connor Flood has had a busy month, nominated in this category for his excellent performances with Carrick and Shannon Rugby Club under 17s in their run to the league semi final. He was also a key member of Drumshambo Vocational Schools, All Ireland winning volleyball side and is also involved with Leitrim GA's under-17 squad for the second year. One of the elder statesmen of the new-look Carrick Town FC senior side, Sean Hayden, impressed once again this month with some solid performances at the heart of the Sligo Leitrim League's new boys. Brian McDonald gets a nomination for his recent performances with the Manor Rangers this month. The midfielder is pulling the strings in the middle of the pitch for Manor. Uh, North Leitrim's athletic club's current Connacht under 11 cross country, yes, I did say under 11, cross country silver medalist Sarah Mulvaney Kelly won the under 14 event. Yep, that's not a misprint. It's under 11 winning an under 14 event for the second time, I might add, at the recent Streets of Ballyshannon 5K in a time of 2051. Very impressive for an athlete who is only 10 years of age. The junior boys' soccer team in St. Clair's Comprehensive were celebrating when they brought home the Connacht B Junior Cup to Manor Hamilton earlier this month they now play the Munster champions in two weeks time another promising youngster in North Leitrim Athletic Club Scott Williams ran a time of 1951 in the streets of Ballyshannon 5k event not a bad day's work for the con- for the current Connacht under 11 cross country champions so male and female cross country champions at under 11 in Leitrim in the more than the other categories there's a great range from I suppose from football to to rugby again, to soccer, to I suppose different different lads, different I suppose overall achievements in different sports. So I'm going to start off this time. I'm going to give my number one to St Clair's junior soccer team. Um, again, a great achievement for their school. And I think they're going on as you said to play Munster, is it or the Munster they're Champions? The champions in the yeah. So I, I think, think they deserve a bit of credit for I suppose a team coming from North Leitrim as well. You know, it's it's you know I suppose as as we said already, Gaelic's a stronghold up in that part, but it's nice to see the soccer coming out as well. Um, my number two is to Scott Williams, um, 11 years of age, I believe, running a nine, 1951 in a, in a, in a 5K, impressive. I think, you know, I says for, for them small legs to be getting around the track at that age and that level, I says, I think it's a remarkable age and the age he's at, 
Um, I managed a 51-19 once. Does that count? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you, you, might, you might have to get Scott a ring and see where he's getting on. Yeah, well, I did a coach. Um, but no, I think that's that's a, a, a huge achievement there. And like, listen, along with, I think, Sarah Mulvaney Kelly, who I'm just going to throw in in, uh, in front. Well, I'll just go get to her, actually, have her higher up. So that's, that's number two with Scott. So number three, I'm going to go to Connor Flood. And we're building up these are the yeah, so these are going point, up, two yeah. points. So it's fifth, fourth, third, third place. Yeah, it's yeah. the Connor Flood. Obviously, Connor's involved in rugby here in Carrick. Um, and You'd know him from the under 17s. Yeah, and he's involved the, in the county under 17 team then. And he's also involved with the Drum Shambo basketball. He's having a good day. Yeah. yeah, so listen, I think credit give credit where credit's due to be involved in M3 and to be competing at such a high level. I think it definitely deserves some bit of recognition. I did see that rugby team play, and I, it was actually me that nominated him from yeah. that game. He was head and shoulders best player on the pitch for both teams. Yeah. And I would have known Connor as a Gaelic player, uh, as a goalkeeper. And when I, in my world, goalkeeper always meant. You were the slow guy. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So he's it's it's a revolution, a revolution. And I even that with us at the under seventeens, he's 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 a very good attitude. Have you seen him play there? Haven't you know. seen him play, but um, like that, I think I think uh, you know it deserves massive credit if he if he's able to you know juggle three sports and not only that but perform highly at, yeah, at yeah. a good level in each one of those three. We will come back to you for your analysis in a minute. Uh, and then what's the, the number four, four for the four, four, four points? Four points. Then I'm going it's to give like it to another <laughs> runner, uh, Sarah Mulvaney Kelly. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know her. I never heard of her until I've read the report. She's only on ten. Her. I, you probably shouldn't have yeah, heard of her. Yet. So she's ten years of age. Um, She's broke the. Well, she's she's won the Ballyshannon five k. Yeah, my understanding is she's she's defended her title yeah. at the under fourteen championships. I think the time you're saying 10. running just over twenty minutes again, which is a phenomenal achievement for a girl at that age. And I suppose the only thing you can say is the future looks bright for athletics and Leitrim. She could if, win if, that if six people, times. She could know. win the under fourteen competition six times. She, it's a phenomenal. huge achievement. She, but it's the, phenomenal. But I just know from running myself or doing five k's, you probably know yourself. The times like times are massive, but times to be running at that for for. For a girl at that age, just over twenty minutes is a phenomenal time for, and you know it's it's uh, it's brilliant to see. And I said best of luck to herself and again Scott as well running in the future. But it's it's brilliant to see it. So then my five points, my top vote goes to another lad I would have played actually against the Gaelic football, but it's for his his soccer achievements to date, which is Rob, Robbie Cunningham uh, from Drummer here, a uh, member of the Manor Rangers soccer club who've had a great month there in the Sligo Leitrim Super League they're mixing up the best with Carrington and Carberry and they've actually defeated both of them there in the last month and I'm led to believe that Robbie is top scorer in the league at present yeah he, he stood out as their best yeah player. so listen really I think good. even at that I and, and just have being close to home I know the Sligo Leitrim League is very competitive and there's a lot of very good players in it and so people up here might maybe have as much you know I suppose the knowledge of it but I just know that's a fair achievement for himself because I know some of the strikers that are in that league and they're top quality ex over some of them so I'm giving Robbie my number five, which is my number one vote overall. It's a really important category. It's a really worthwhile category. I think um, you know so much sport goes on at a local level, and maybe it doesn't often get the the credit it deserves. So this is a, I think this is a really a really really um, positive thing, and a really really good to get recognition in in this area. I suppose Carrick Town seems to be going pretty well this year. I see there's two lads um, two lads involved there. Now I have I have to stop you there just on that because Carrick Town they are nominated. But they're in the Premier Division versus the Super League is a higher division up. So Manor are at a higher le- yeah, level. No, in that. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware that they're affecting the second division or the second division side. Yeah, but it's good. It's good to see them. That's rewarded there with, with Sean Hayden and uh, Shane Byrne, both them, um, both involved there. Um, Carrick Rugby, I know, had a great year last year, um, and they're 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 they moved up a, a division in the league this year, I think. So um, their captain Keith Cross gets a nod there, and fair play to him. Um, I suppose with Manor Rangers. Um, I'm led to believe that they're they're kind of within touch and distance at the top of the league, or they, or they have been. Or yeah, they've beaten the two other title challengers. Carberry Rangers I, I th- won, wasn't it? Carberry and they've also beaten Cartron, and so they're, yeah, they're they're basically they're in the hunt. If they win the next two games against those two teams, they're probably going to win the league, and yeah. they've never done it before. So and that's me. that's massive, you know, especially for a Leitrim club. Obviously, I know there's a, there's big soccer, big soccer, um, you know, as well there in sport in Sligo with Sligo Rovers, and that. But for I know that a lot of that may be overflowed into North Leitrim into Manor Hamlet there. But great to see the the Manor lads doing well, and you know, Robbie Cunningham, uh, Brian McDonald. I suppose I, I'd be more familiar with them from a GAA background. Um, you know, two two uh, fairly handy forwards and on, on, on the GAA pitch when they want to be. But um, great to see them lads doing well as well and get getting the nod and um, I suppose um, yet again uh, schools again it's a uh, school probably do a lot of uh, work that they don't get enough credit for with um with, with, with in team sports anyway for certain like and to see the, the teacher again though the, the teacher again <laughs> but, uh, but just to see that it's great to see that that that, that in there is again and with the, with the under seventeen soccer lads there and I think Anthony McDonald is involved with them and yet again another fairly uh, fairly solid GA back from there with, with Anthony so um, uh, fair play to them and like that probably the most the most impressive uh, story of, of the evening for me is uh, 
is uh, the two guys there, Scott Williams and Sarah Mulvaney Kelly, um, doing times that will put uh, put, put, put people to, to shame, like you know, for at such a young age, like you know. So as like, as a matter of interest, just for re- reference, Donica, you do five Ks. Yeah. What's your PB? Now you're you're an elite athlete as well, so it's going to be impressive. <laughs> but you're slightly older and stronger than both of these athletes. I, I think like anything around twenty minutes for for guys that age, that's just it's crazy like you know it's, I mean it's 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 pretty that's pretty fast like you know you're talking you know four minute kilometers like I mean for guys that are <laughs> small like that's a lot that's just very fast I mean that just that's very fast it took it took me you know a while to break 20 minutes like you know I certainly don't know I wasn't doing it you know when I was that young but you know um, I don't know what I'm running now maybe I think it's probably 16 or 17 minutes for 5k but like. it's not hugely no it's not it's different it's, it's not, not hugely different no no like, really know. it's it's a uh, could we have the next Sonia Sullivan on our hands anyway Darren I interrupted you oh no you're alright I was just going to say I'm probably doing myself out of a, out of a chance at start with the club this year but I get had time to do a 3k in uh, 48 <laughs> 19 minutes so uh, uh, that's no, that's not an exaggeration but um, no, if, like, that's, it, it's, that's phenomenal and um the fact that they're both that, that especially Sarah has maybe three or four years to go at defending that uh, that on the fourteen title I'd say there'd be there'd be guys lining up with the girls lining up the tape stick in the side of her maybe in a few years' time. But you no, know, it's it, it, it's a really it's a it, it's a dynamic spread. Uh, lots of different sports represented there, team and individual disciplines and um, Fair play to them all, I suppose, is the, is the, is the message there, from, from, certainly from my point of view. We'll come yeah. back to you for your, for your numbers. We might have a bit more drama in this when we work our way up from the, from the <laughs> bottom. Um, Donica, your thoughts on what's there? Um, Who's impressed you? I mean, yeah, look, at just those two runners, those two kids. Like, that's, I just yeah, I can't get my head around that at all. But, um, you know, I know Tom is training them hard up there in, in, in North Leitrim, I see. And look, at it, it's, you know, it's a credit to all the work they're putting in. They seem to be having a bit of fun as well and doing it. And, Wow, like this, just going to get faster. Those times are going to come down, and uh, they've impressed me. You know, I mean, obviously the Carrick FC guys, you know, Shane and uh, Sean Hayden as well. They're like, you know, I know they're they they were going well there for a while, and I think they had a they had a loss or two the last few games. So, um, but yeah, hopefully they can get back to winning ways again. And um, yeah, I know Shane is doing well as well. I mean, it's nice to see them. Of course, Keith and the rugby team there. They, they you know, they're such a good year last year as well and uh, I actually uh, I played music for their final party there which was you know it's uh, nothing scarier than, than singing 500 miles and having a rugby team coming towards you like you know and a jumping <laughs> movements um, but you know they're going from strength to strength as well so it's good um, let me see oh, of course the schools as well yeah the junior boys I mean that's 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 pretty good as well like you know um, and uh, Connacht Championships don't really come around every other week do they Definitely no not. although in Manor Hamilton they've added the girls Connacht Championship this week so it kind of is it a weekly event at the moment up in uh, St. Clair's yeah well, big time yeah well they seem to be flying it I mean you know there's Connor Flood again like this man you know god he's, he's involved in every sport and, and at a, a serious level it, it looks like as well so I mean um, yeah fair play to Connor like he seems to be He's killing it across all sports he enters. So fair play. Okay, well, let's go quickly through the, the public vote. And we have the, the top five from the public vote are as follows. In fifth place is Scott Williams. Uh, he came in on fifth place in that. Uh, fourth place is Brian McDonald Bino uh, for, for Manor Hamilton Rangers. Uh, they've obviously got the vote out in Manor. Uh, well able to get the vote k- k- taken over. Connor Flood, uh, that you mentioned, he's third place in that while Shane Byrne of Carrick Town finished fourth and Sarah Mulvaney Kelly is top of the pile online. She got a phenomenal vote. I think she's nearly got herself a doll seat at this stage. Uh, I think she'd <laughs> over 200 votes when some people wow. have struggled to get two. Um, so it's it's a huge achievement. So her fair play to her and her family for coming out. But I think it also marks how good her accomplishment actually is, that she was able to, to get people to actually take the time to to vote because it's not a simple enough process we made it a little bit awkward for people so that it was genuine and apart from maybe one or two people uh, we we've weeded out well, I think maybe two dodgy looking votes but the rest are all legit all real people wow. so um we're really happy with how that went i know one or two people have said that they missed out on voting because it wouldn't let them but i'd rather miss one or two genuine votes than have five thousand uh, dodgy votes coming in uh, so everybody every vote represents a person and we can vouch for that which is great now the online vote that's where we have we have Emlyn I'm going to start and then I'm going to let the two of you take it away from there if that's alright so uh, or what we might do is actually we might do the with the one points first we'll do it a bit like Eurovision right so <laughs> my one point uh, is going to go to the junior soccer team in St. Clair's phenomenal achievement really good side 
and uh, they deserve to get a, a mention for that. So they're getting my one point. Donica? Yeah, I'm. Um, my one point. I'm going to give it to to Robbie Cunningham there and the and the Leitrim Super League side because um, yeah, again that's a uh, you know it's pretty elite um, a tournament like for them guys to be in. So um, yeah, he's getting my one point. Darren, I'm going to give my one point to the the Clare soccer lads as well. Yeah, fantastic. See them see them you know come away with, with titles and as you rightly said, Brefley, con titles don't always come out every day and it's something like. Uh, especially it, it can be diff- difficult in the schools environment because your your team is constantly evolving every year every two years it's very hard to you know to achieve consistency so to get a group of lads together and get push on and, and get a win there is fantastic so more power to them oh, fair play to them my number two is going to one of the youngsters on today's bill and that is scott williams uh He's phenomenal time. Like, okay, yes, faster than Sarah, but I think he's a year older and he's a boy. Um, so her time is probably, relatively speaking, she will feature in my list further up. But he gets my two points. Uh, yeah, again, for me, you know, it was a close call between the two of them. I actually gave it to my two points to Sarah because I just think, you know, that's it's a phenomenal achievement. Like, you know, but she's definitely going to be back in this list again. I mean, once this weather lifts and the race starts. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to hear lots of that name, I think, oh, yeah. over the, the coming years. No yeah, pressure, Darren. Briefly, uh, no, great points. Think alike. Uh, in the morning <laughs> yourself, I've given, I've given uh, my two points to, to Scott Williams there. Yeah, um, fantastic times of, 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 of young people like that. And you just, I, I know it, athletics has kind of grown in popularity so much the last few years. It kind of gets you thinking, for me, who I come, I come from a team sport background, you know, where, what, what other sports could utilise speed like that? And, like, you know, but um, no, definitely for him, he well deserved, like, fair play. Don't. You trying to recruit him now for Glen Carr Manor, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> 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 Let's get him into the GA. <laughs> um, three points. I have gone um, with Carrick Rugby and Connor Flood. I think the boy has had a phenomenal month. Um, I watched him play the rugby game. Um, I can't remember who they were playing now off the top of my head, but they played a game and he was head and shoulders the best player on the pitch. And then I asked about him afterwards. Now, I do know Connor, I know the family, um, but I, I, I had the pleasure of coaching his two sisters with the county team a couple of years ago, with the county minors and um, sports mad family. And I asked how Connor Flood, I haven't heard his name mentioned in rugby. Oh no, he only started in September. So he's only playing the sport three or four months. He's, he's playing at, uh, as a flanker on the team and he's just, He's head and shoulders above everybody else. No disrespect to the other boys. It's a decent team, but but he's just really, really impressive. As well as that, as Emlyn said, he's a member of their under-17 squad. He's also involved in um, in whatever's going on in the volleyball. He's been a key part of that team as well. So phenomenal month for him. I don't know how he's going to settle down and, and focus on a leave, leave and search. That could be uh, challenging, to say the least, in the next couple of years. <laughs> well... Um Okay, I just uh, it was either you know Sarah or Scott. I gave Scott my three points. I, you know, I just I'm so impressed by these youngsters. I just think it's uh, you know I can relate directly to these times. So I just think um, yeah, he's another one to watch. I think it's uh, um, I think it's a great achievement. Um, so I'm going to give it to Scott. Yeah. I give my three to to Connor Flood as well. Um, you just cogged my homework. Yeah. I have, I have, well, yeah, that's that might be delegation. No, I haven't been copying your homework certainly, but like that, um, I suppose what's over for me there that, to give him a mention was that the fact I know he's nominated for his exploits in the rugby field, but like that to to be more or less a, a newbie at rugby and to be able to you know contribute to such a high level. I know he's with the Emlyn and Benny Gook in there in the county seventeens. He's got a an, an international volleyball medal in his back pocket now as well. Like to be to be able to maintain that level of consistency over to, over across different different different, dis, different disciplines and different sports is uh, is is remarkable and deserve, I think it deserves an odd. So I've given him my three. Excellent. My four goes to youth, and that is Sarah Mulvaney Kelly. Four points for her because. Like we've said, I'm not going to talk about it again, but she's been just a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal performance, and I think she's one for the future. So she gets my four points. Um, I'm going to give uh, Carrick Town Shane Byrne my four. Um, I just, I'm just delighted to see senior team back out again with the lads, and uh, they were going well. I think they have a little bit of a, a little speed bump at the moment, but um, you know, let's. Uh, I'm going to will this four points to them so that they can, you know, go back into winning ways again. So just going to give a nod to the lads out there, and um, yeah, well done. Keep up the good work. Um, I give my four to, to Robbie Cunningham as we, we, we had mentioned earlier on you know um, the Man of Rangers lads are, are absolutely flying in the in the Super League or the Premier League um, and well I they're the Super League Super League, I mean, yeah, sorry, League. Yeah, Super it's, League. Ver- so it's very confusing it's hard, when you know what's going to on to get the Super Lives, yeah, but in the Super League and if they do go on and do it you know goals win games and I think Robbie's top scorer as well as Emlyn said earlier on so. top scorer across the whole league not just in the yeah, club definitely, wow, definitely yeah. worthy of those four points I think yeah absolutely 
Excellent. So now our top ones, and people might be sitting at home kind of trying to work out, they're either completely confused <laughs> or, uh, or they're not quite sure. So um, let's talk about who we've picked for our, our top places. And um, I'm going to lead off with this because I have picked Robbie Cunningham. I think the achievement is phenomenal. Top scorer across the league. And he's really been the spearheading manners pushed to the first ever Super League title and it will be a huge achievement to for a Leitrim team to come in as the country bumpkins and, and upset all the ta- the town teams. I don't think I don't think people Leitrim people really appreciate how big of an achievement that actually is yeah, in soccer because Leitrim, for all intents and purposes, Manor is effectively for the most part all North Leitrim fo- so- football players in their off season just having a bit of a laugh and they've just pulled it together this year and they've a really good management team down there in terms of um, Brian McDonald, Th- Thomas McDonald, who's been part of that. He's got a couple of brothers in the team. There's a couple of the hickeys there as well, but they're all Gaelic players nearly for the most part and to pull that together and actually compete against the lads who play soccer only, it's a phenomenal achievement, phenomenal achievement. So he gets my five votes uh, at the top of the table for that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and give Connor Flood my five points. I just think it's phenomenal across three sports like to be that good and to be at that level. I just he's I just mean, saying that because he's a triathlete. That's Look a talent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a talent that, that only talent. I have. Yeah. <laughs> I just think Everything. that's that's great. Like I mean, you know, and what he's in leaving cert as well. I, I'm not sure if he's leaving cert. I think he might be he's another year, but I'm oh, I'm not quite sure on that one. I mean, he has lots of years of, of great sport ahead of him. So um, yeah, that's I just think that's yeah, he definitely deserves it. Uh, he gets my five points. And well finally, back. yeah, I can give my points to Sir, or my five points to Sir Mavani Kelly. Um, I was, like I said, I was fo- following along there on the, on the, on online on the on the website there during the week to make, you know, what a result, what a time for, uh, and like that her, the age, uh, her her age to, to be to be clocking the, that, a time like that and, and and retaining titles with four years left to go in the red, it just your mind boggles as to you know if she was to keep going on that path where she may end up you know in, in terms of you know her her, her athletic career and uh, but like that for it, it, it's it, it's fantastic it's a it's a very really good story and it, it, it's something that it do your heart good to hear, hear something like that you know that, that that's something that uh, to do really really well so fair play to Sarah no definitely she deserves that five points for me so five points from Sarah and that might be very very important <laughs> in just a few minutes we're going to add them all up Brian Bino McDonald he has two points we have St. Clair's junior soccer team on three points Managed, ironically enough, by Brian's brother, <laughs> Anthony. Um, Shane Byrne has eight points for his achievements this month with uh, Carrick Town. Scott Williams, his fantastic time in the Ballyshannon 5K, he has ten points. He finishes in fourth place in the competition. Robbie Cunningham with 15 points. He has a phenomenal month. Deserves probably to be higher than third place, but in third place. Uh, Connor Flood finishes in 17 points in second place in the competition and by virtue of those five points that you gave her in the last <laughs> hunt the phenomenal Sarah Mulvaney Kelly uh, takes top spot in this ca- category so there you have it folks uh, phenomenal achievement congratulations to our three winners uh, in the international category to Drumshambo Vocational School for their volleyball success in the national category Matthew Early for his outstanding achievement uh, winning a conic double at senior level with Sligo in the cup and the league and also then in the local level 10 year old Sarah Mulvaney Kelly what a fantastic achievement lads thank you very much it's been a pleasure thanks, thanks, very, much, thanks very much for having me